Um, we're now going to go to short-term rental item number 78. We have eight speakers I'm going to call, two minutes each, uh, consistent with the rules. This is uh, item number 78, short-term rentals. Ms. Gallo, this is your resolution. You want to lay it out? Thank you. Um, last Thursday, we did a press conference with the mayor and some of the other council members um, as the result of numerous calls that all of the districts have received over the past several months from constituents and neighbors and neighborhoods who are really having um, horrific issues and problems with short-term rentals in their neighborhoods that are not being operated in compliance with the existing short-term rental ordinance and city code. And so this resolution is the result of a desire to um, do what we can to increase the enforcement of the non-complying short-term rentals. Uh, the purpose of this resolution is, is not to alter the existing short-term rental ordinance, uh, but only in the areas that uh, need to be altered to enable uh, code compliance in the city to be able to enforce more effectively the short-term rentals that are not operating in compliance. The, um, the timetable that's proposed in this resolution, and I want to just say a little bit about that because it's, it's all of our desires to, to move this process on as quickly as possible because some of these neighbors have been dealing um, with issues in their neighborhood for several years now and getting very frustrated that nothing's being done or can't be done to, to eliminate the behavior that's not in compliance with the code. Um, the issue that we're dealing with at this point is that most of you may know already that the city council does not have the, the standing meetings in July. So what we wanted to do was move this on as quickly as possible. And as a result, it's scheduled to, we've, this resolution is asking the city manager to look at the departments, look at the ordinance, come back to us, to the council with his recommendations after evaluating where the problems are, talking to concerned neighbors, um, talking to STR um, owners and come back with recommendations on how we can get compliance better both for those operating out of code and non-compliance and also the, the people that are operating short-term rentals and not, aren't even getting a license. So the reality is we've been able to um, ask for this to be brought back to the city council from the city manager for our August 13th. I think that's right. I don't have it in front of me right now. Uh, council meeting and with recommendations it will then go to the um, neighborhood committee meeting at the very next meeting and then come back to the council at the next council meeting on the 20th so we really are fast tracking this with the available schedule that we have with the council not having scheduled meetings in july and look forward code compliance has already brought forth some suggestions and i know that will be part of the city manager's uh, recommendations when it's brought back to us on the 13th. Mr. Mayor, yes. I, I also just want to briefly lay out what the uh, committee's recommendation was for this item. We did recommend um, passage of Council Member Gallo's resolution. We, on that same day of the committee hearing, we got the code department's recommended ordinance changes, which would be one part of the city manager's report in August. Uh, it was. Councilmember Gallo did not think it would be the whole of that report, but it would be a part of it. Um, there was some interest on the committee to incorporate all of these recommended ordinance changes in today's resolution. Um, but what the committee wound up um, recommending was that in today's resolution, we give direction to um, to either to the city management that we bring back each of these recommended ordinance changes on the August 20th meeting. Um, as uh, potential code amendments that the city council could vote on, except with one change to the list that you have before you, which is uh, section one and bullet one on the engaging public, public interest advertising provision. The committee recommended that on the August 20th committee meeting, we, um, we have before us a code amendment that would just entirely strike section 25-2-791G of the city's land development code, which allows for um, gauging public in interest in uh, sh commercial short-term rental without a license. And so um, 
after we get speakers, I will uh, amend the res I will move to amend the resolution to incorporate the, those committee recommendations. We're going to go then to uh, public discussion comment here. First speaker is going to be Jennifer uh, Hulan. Council. I'm here today to support the Austin Rental Alliance and the Austin Creative Community. The music community, the arts community, the film and video, the video gaming community count on short-term rentals. Musicians and music production staff, filmmakers, television production, gaming production depends on these rentals when they're creating new projects in Austin. Visitors to events like Art City or gallery openings depend on these. The short-term rentals themselves help to attract innovators and creative community members with families or who may want to stay for a little bit longer. But perhaps just as important, the hotel occupancy taxes generated by short-term rentals go into supporting our cultural arts here and organizations including the Austin Film Society, Ballet East Dance Company, Mexicarte, the Hispanic Alliance for the Performing Arts, Austin Latino Music Association, more than 200 other groups. $15 million in hotel occupancy taxes are generated by the people who are complying with the rules by the people who are registered and are doing what this resolution asks for. We'd like you to consider what possibilities there are if everybody were registered, if everybody doing this were paying their fair share of taxes, what it could mean to our nonprofits and our creative community. So in closing, just wanted you to understand that the creative community is in support of the Austin Rental Alliance here in item 78, and we believe that any non-compliance can be solved by code enforcement. Thank you. Next speaker is Dan Matola, and then TJ Clark. Hello, Mayor, Council Members, staff. My name is Dan Matola. Can everybody hear me okay? Uh, I am a short-term rental owner and a member of the Austin Rental Alliance. The Austin Rental Alliance represents 1,247 registered operators of short-term rentals in our community. Austin Rental Alliance also works to represent stakeholders short-term rentals, which include hundreds of housekeepers, landscapers, managers, contractors, pool cleaners, and more. The United States Conference of Mayors said in a resolution the traditional sh short-term rental of homes can provide flexible housing options that allow family travelers and business travelers spending longer periods of time in the community a safe accommodation while contributing to the local economy. And that onerous regulations of short-term rentals can drive the industry underground, thus evading local regulations and hotel taxes. And fair regulation of short-term rentals ensures greater compliance and greater receipt of hotel taxes. My story is similar to others who operate short-term rentals. I host visitors who work in the music, film, digital media, high-tech communities. I host visiting students and professors. I've hosted travelers and people working on consulting projects here in Austin. Right now, I'm hosting a visiting UT lecturer, and in my other property, I'm hosting two out-of-state musicians mixing an album with a local producer. Uh, the wife in this husband and wife duo is six months pregnant, and simply wants the comforts of home uh, during the two weeks they're here. Relatives of neighbors are also frequent renters, and I often rent my STR on a monthly basis. All the travelers who choose to stay with me do so because they're staying for a little bit longer period of time and are looking for the flexibility short-term rentals provide. The Austin Rental Alliance supports item 78 and feels the challenges of the tiny handful of non-complying properties can be easily solved by code enforcement allowing the rest of the community to enjoy the benefits short-term rentals bring. Thank you very much. Mayor. Hey. Hold on one moment, please. Mr. Andrea. Yeah. I just want to ask you a question. Do you live next to a short-term rental? Um, one of my short-term rentals is directly behind my home. Okay. It's so, a type so one accessory. Type one accessory. But you don't live next to a type two? I don't. Okay, thank you. Okay. Olivia, 
Castellet has on deck. On deck, you're next. Sir. I thought it was next, I'm sorry. <laughs> you are next. <laughs> She's next. next. <laughs> None? <laughs> oh, I'm on now, okay. <laughs> By on deck, I mean you're after the next speaker. I apologize. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, my name is TJ Clark. I'm the co-founder um, and CEO of Turnkey Vacation Rentals, which is an Austin homegrown high-tech company that we started here to serve homeowners who want to put their uh, either primary or uh, secondary homes into the great framework that Austin has provided for short-term rentals. Um, we started this business about two and a half years ago, and I just want to highlight and applaud Austin for being a pioneer and being progressive to deal with the situation of short-term rentals where many metro areas are delaying and refusing to deal with it and causing the industry to be underground, under, unregulated, and promoting bad neighborhood uh, you know, relationships by not properly handling uh, short-term rentals and making it safe in which to operate. We had considered, uh, I moved here from San Francisco to start this business here because we thought that Austin had the right regulatory framework in which we could start a business and operate legally and respectfully within the community. That is not going on in San Francisco. I want to highlight that recently uh, we began operating in Nashville, so we're expanding into other markets where we help homeowners, and the Nashville uh, City Council worked with our representative there looking at the Austin regulations as the model of how they wanted to um, provide a, f a regulatory framework in Nashville and they adopted many of the, promo the uh, provisions, the key provisions of the Austin framework there. Um, so what I am against is having the regulations reopened. I believe the regulations are right. We are pro-enforcement. Uh, we would like to see the Zoning Commission doing more to stop the bad actors in town. Um, we want people paying taxes. We want them getting their licenses. We think that's the right way to go. We don't think it takes a revisit of a framework in the regulations that are working and have the enforcement provisions uh, to make this work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. I have, yes, sir. I, I, would you... Would you... Uh, uh, would you agree that, you know, we need some kind of enforcement, like maybe we should be able to go in there and inspect to see the bad actors are doing with those houses in the bunk. Uh, that, would you have a problem with that? Not at all. We, we think that the framework is very fair. We think that the provisions are enforced beginning with the application to receive a license. You have to jump through uh, several um, regulatory uh, hurdles in order to get your license. Without your license, which could be taken away, at any time by the Zoning Commission, uh, then you could uh, be without the ability to rent. If you're renting and you're not paying occupancy taxes, you're subjecting yourself to criminal liabilities. Those are really strong teeth in the regulations that you currently have. We would encourage the Zoning Commission to use those to crack down on the bad actors. And there are already inspection provisions where we've had many of our homes inspected um, for code compliance um, issues, and, that, and we are supportive of that. Yeah. Yes, Ms. Pavel. Excuse I need, me, sir. I think, sir, I need clarification on the last point that you made. Did you mean in this, in Austin, you've had code compliance inspect a lot of your homes? Yes. Yeah, so um, in Austin, as you're aware, in order to obtain a short-term rental license, you have to have an occupancy permit, uh, a certificate of occupancy for your home. Um, if you don't have that, then what you have to do is go through a process with the Zoning Commission to where it can be um, established as habitable. And that usually results in the city coming in and doing an inspection on the home in order for it to be uh, deemed to be able to receive an SCR license. So, did, so you had a lot of homes within your portfolio that did not have certificates of occupancy and had to have a city inspector come out and inspect it? Approximately 10%. That's kind of a high number. Wow. I mean, that's a lot of homes that didn't have a certificate of occupancy, but we're occupying it. Okay, that's right. thank yeah. you. So that mm -hmm. wouldn't be code compliance. I think those are our building inspectors, right? That's right. And the number one reason why there wouldn't be an occupancy uh, certificate available is if you might have a permit right, that, that you had that is still outstanding yeah. and hadn't been closed out. Okay, thank you. Sir, Mayor, yes, one more question, please. Um, so you... You think that um, it would be okay for the inspections of, uh, is, are your homes type one, type two? 
Every I type. Think. We have all, one of each in one, two, and th type three. Okay, so enforcement would be okay with you. What is what? What do you feel about the enforcement of those that are unregulated? Those are underground. How 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 does code help enforce that? It it should be they should be cracked down upon. You should have a license, number one. I believe that the code, um, or sorry, the zoning commission does currently review listings of persons in town that are listing in uh, in online sites like Airbnb to find those properties that are operating without a license. That should be step number one. Those owners should be notified. Step number two is, are they paying their occupancy taxes? They're very serious penalties if you are not paying your occupancy taxes. And those two mechanisms seem like severe uh, and effective ways that are currently on the books that the Zoning Commission and uh, the tax authority here could be using. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next speaker. Hello, thank you, council members. My name is Olivia Castilleja. I am District 9. I am also in the film industry. I live with a whole bunch of creatives in my neighborhood. At the beginning of the year, our next door neighbors informed us that they were actively involved in short-term rentals. I wish them well. And at the time, I had no issues with the idea. I too have stayed in a short-term rental. Now at this time, there are now short-term renters on a weekly basis next door, and our residence appears to be a commercial enterprise. And I wanted to know what safeguards are in place to ensure the protection of the adjacent residents. And for example, as a property owner myself, we expect safe, a safe environment for our five-year-old daughter and myself and my husband. But now it seems that we are exposed to a lewd and disruptive behavior as such. And our quality of life has really diminished. There's vulgar language, including cursing, as well as odor of marijuana and emanating from that property next door. And it feels that we are now having to police what is going on from the continuing people that that are renting there and it doesn't it doesn't feel safe i pay a lot of tax dollars and i love austin and i this is what i have to say please keep us safe thank you very much thank you uh consuelo estanislao Hello, Mayor, Council Members, and Staff. My name is Amia Stanislao. I am a Housekeeper General Manager uh, with Maid to More. Uh, there are nine housekeepers on my team. Uh, these are two of the members, and we clean short-term rentals in Austin. Um, there are hundreds of other housekeepers, landscapers, pool cleaners, managers, and accountants who depend on their jobs with short-term rentals. These short-term rentals are registered and compliant. The owners and managers that we work with are very professional and or and cordial people. And the bidders who stay in the short-term rentals are very gracious and respectful. Our company, Made Some More, has grown and prospered due to short-term rentals. In fact, we see ourselves hiring more staff in our teams very soon. We support item 78, and we feel that any changes can be easily solved by the code enforcement staff allowing the hundreds of employees of short-term rentals to continue working in Austin. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Jessica. Newfeld. Hi, my name is Jessica Newfeld, and I live in District 10. I want to say that I am in favor of uh, this resolution and also the, the um, proposition to strike the language allowing people to um, uh, get uh, in engage in test the waters test the waters testing the waters um, before having a license thanks I also want to thank Sherry Gallo my councilwoman um, for raising this issue um, and um, 
raising the visibility of the impact on short-term rentals, particularly type two short-term rentals on our community and in our neighborhood. Um, on April 16, 2015, profane and homophobic chants were repeated over and over by a group of men from the backyard of the type two uh, STR next door while our family was trying to enjoy a time outside on our deck. Throughout the rest of the weekend, similar shouting and loud music continued, and it is just one example of the many ways our lives have been disrupted by the short-term rental next door. The type two short-term rental next to our house, we believe is in violation of the city's zoning ordinance. The property is zoned in uh, DR, which does not allow for any commercial operation, and according to the permitted use chart on the City of Austin's website, specifically does not allow for STR as a permitted use. Therefore, we believe the original permit was issued incorrectly. I have brought this to the attention of code enforcement and was told they will get back to me. I have not heard from them. The fact that the property is now a hotel has led to noxious and offensive activities which have become a continuing annoyance to our family and the rest of the neighborhood. The loud noise late at night, including after 11 p.m. on weeknights, traffic, garbage on our property and on the street has been steady. The music and shouting often start in the afternoon and go well past midnight. You wanna conclude your thought? My last point is this. Our neighbors next door on the other side, we know well. They're on our emergency contact list for our babysitters. They leave Christmas presents for our pets. The STR, every week it's a new stranger, a new person that we don't know. And I, I would echo the, um, the District 9 woman who spoke that we, we need you to, in, to not only enforce the existing ordinances, but to make stricter restrictions on these operating, these STRs operating to ban type two SDRs, um, non-owner occupied SDRs, um, and Thank to you. do your best to keep us safe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker is Tracy Smith. Tracy Smith. After Tracy is our last speaker, David King. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. Um, I live um, in District 3, and I live, reside next to um, a short-term rental 2 that started um, October 2014. I have submitted many complaints to the city. I have a list of SR numbers that I have complained about over occupancy, um, which seems to be the biggest issue that we have. Um, the house that is next to me is advertised, and this gentleman owns four properties within a mile of my house. It advertises for 1,200 a night. It sleeps 16 to 20, and it's a three bedroom, two bath. He, each house is kind of like a duplicate of each, they all mimic each other. Uh, they're party homes, and we have to deal with pretty much the arrival of Thursday or Friday, the anxiety level of all of our neighbors starts to, it's there because we've been putting up with it for so long. The large groups come in, um, it's an average between 10 to 14 guys, sometimes there's more. He has a property this, and, my, and what I'm talking about is a half a mile, a half a block from Sanchez Elementary School. He also has another property right around the corner. And what they're doing now is 14 guys will stay at this property and then they go back and forth between the two properties and they party and they drink all day. I'm not against drinking, I'm not against partying, but they drink all day. And it's a bachelor party scene that he seems to feed um, somehow there's a connection with bachelor parties and the fraternity style um, parties, young 20, 30 year old guys coming in and they just party all the time. You can conclude your thought. Can I just add one thing? Real quick. Okay. Um, well, I've called, we have all called code enforcement. As long as it's been going on, there's nothing in our city that 
will actually do anything. And we've had meetings with code, et cetera. There's nothing that anyone could do. Uh, we even had one of the officers from code catch that property four times over occupied. And it went to the prosecutor's office. They wrote language for it. It went to municipal court. And then they said, well, we'd have to fly all those people back and they'd have to be witnesses that Joe from Chicago, yeah, I got busted. I was there with my 14 friends. And so that's the problem. Sorry, I was a little okay. long-winded on the first part. But. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. David King. Thank you, Mayor and Mayor Pro Tem and Council Members. My name is David King. I live in District 5, and we have we also have problems with uh, chronic problems with commercial STRs in our neighborhoods, Barton Hills, Zilker, and other neighborhoods in District 5. So I'm very glad that you brought this this resolution forward, Council Member Gallo. I think this is a big, good step in the right direction here. I also am a member of the Austin Neighborhoods Council, and the executive committee of the Austin Neighborhoods Council unanimously, unanimously passed a resolution in support of your resolution. But we take it a step further, and we, we call for a ban, an eventual ban on commercial type 2 STRs. You've heard about the problems. You've heard about the problems from the other, other districts here, District 3, District 5, my district, District 9, and District 10. So we have, th these are widespread problems, chronic problems, and, and we've already had some tightening up of the ordinance a few years ago, and that really hasn't helped the, help solve the problem. So I'm not sure why Austin's ordinance is considered a model, considered, considering all these problems, these chronic widespread problems. And, you know, um, the, uh, the state of Texas, the bill was, uh, was, was, was uh, proposed in the state legislature this last session that would, that would call for commercial STRs be, to be located only in commercially zoned districts. It would prohibit them in residential districts. So even the state of Texas understood that. The legislature uh, wished the bill had passed, but it didn't. But even they, they had that right. So we should go in that direction too with commercial type two STRs. Uh, they're not affordable. You've heard they go over $1,000 a night. They drive up rental rates. They take, they've taken over 400 single family homes off the market that, that would otherwise be available to single families with children who could go, children who could go to our central Austin neighborhood schools. And AISD already projects declining enrollment in our central Austin neighborhood schools over the next 10 years. So this could be a way to provide more affordable housing quickly to our central Austin neighborhoods and, and, and boost the enrollment of our, of our neighborhood schools. So I hope that you will move forward with, with implementing this resolution as soon as possible and then move to ban commercial type two STRs from residential zoned areas. Thank, Thank you. you. May That's I, the public contact, Ms. Gallo. May I just mention one thing? Um, on to the fellow council members, Stuart Hirsch passed a document out, and he graciously, he had signed up to speak, but graciously gave his time to other people. So just to point out that he did, we did pass that out to everyone. Okay. Yes. Uh, any discussion on item number 78? Mr. Kassar, did you want to make an amendment? Yes, I would like to... Um, as the, I think the committee unanimously recommended to amend this resolution um, to add a clause that gives further direction to our city management to bring forward on August to the, to the August 20th city council meeting uh, language that would initiate code amendments um, that would uh, accomplish the four um, recommendations brought forth by the code department to our planning and neighborhoods committee and those four recommendations are on the sheet outlined here with the exception of uh, in uh, number one bullet number one on this sheet which is addressing gauging public interest um, that that instead of bringing forward that one bullet one that they instead the code amendment be brought forward that we or not the code amendment be brought forward but the process for initiating a code amendment be brought forward to strike section 25-2-791G of the City Land Development Code. Um, and for those that don't speak code uh, that are listening, um, what that means is that uh, we could initiate a code amendment August 20th if that was the will of the body to eliminate the provision that gives safe harbor to those advertising short-term rental, rentals without a license. 
Okay, we have a uh, we have a motion from Ms. Gallo to uh, adopt this item number 78, seconded by uh, Ms. Ms. Troxler, uh, and then we have an amendment to that uh, to uh, add the direction for the manager to come back on August 20th with uh, an ordinance that raises these one, two, three, four points with the exception of the first bullet point just saying to strike the testing the water provision. Is there a second to that amendment? Ms. Gallo seconds that amendment. Uh, so we have one report on the 13th and then one coming back on the 20th. But the 13th is just the, uh, the findings to the council, which I would actually like to see uh, before we take the action. So I'm fine with that. Yes. Mayor, if I may, to clarify the motion, I believe that uh, Councilwoman Kassar made was to come back with a resolution on the 20th that would initiate the code amendments. The code amendments would not come back to the council on the 20th, just starting the process, if that's, that's correct. correct. Okay. okay. It's been moved and seconded to amend this to add that a resolution be presented on the 20th directing an ordinance be drafted and presented. Any objection to that? All in favor of that, please raise your hand. Those opposed? I'm abstaining. I'm abstaining. Two abstaining, Houston and Zimmerman, rest voting, yes. We now have 78 as amended. Any further discussion on this item? Mr. Zimmerman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I've got some frustration with what's going on here. As far as uh, Northwest Austin and District 6, I have quite a few constituents that don't even know what short terminals are. I mean, we're far enough away from the Austin city core to where there's not, you know, a real demand. Uh, I think the closer you get to the city core and Zilker Park and a lot of our main attractions, the, the bigger issue I think this gets to be, or if you're close to the lake or something. Um, I. I'm really concerned that uh, Austin kind of unwittingly contributed to the problems we're hearing by creating STRs in the first place. We, we heard from we, we heard from uh, one enterprising uh, gentleman actually moved into Austin to start up a business based on STRs. And, and I don't think I wasn't here when STRs were passed, but I'm going to guess that wasn't the intention that we would create a new commercial business of people now repurposing homes, you know, move out the people that live there and then move in short-term uh, rentals because it's a way to make more money. So I, I'm just, and I know that we're not talking about specific ordinance here, just recommendations coming back, but I'm going to make a prediction that this whole thing is going in the wrong direction. I'm just going to make a prediction that what's going to happen is we're going to get some recommendations come back and instead of solving problems, they're going to create new problems. And the, the basic problems I've heard through the emails and through testimony is we have nuisance noise, uh, disorderly conduct from people getting drunk and doing drugs and what have you, uh, parking problems from too many people being in a, a building that's not designed for that. And I think we already have things on the books that would help us address those existing problems. My understanding is uh, n nuisance noise, uh, that could be handled uh, already through APD or code enforcement or what have you and so I, I'm just really discouraged that this that we're going to go and try to fix this and end up not fixing it and possibly making it worse so I'm going to be voting uh, against this and I'd like to see us go back to not having STRs and trying to deal with the problems we've heard on the system Ms. Houston. Mayor I'd like to ask the code department to um, come forward if I may. Is that appropriate this time? Yes. Uh, because people seem to think that they have the ability to enforce all the violations that neighbors are complaining about, but I'm not sure they have that ability. So I would like for Mr. Smart to talk to us about what you can and cannot do at this point. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, Carl Smart, director of Austin Code Department. Uh, we have, we do have some abilities, some abilities to enforce the code uh, related to short-term rentals, but um, we've looked at ways that uh, that ability can be enhanced, it can be strengthened. And so the uh, recommendations that we presented thus far, I think will help strengthen that enforcement ability. 
Uh, clearly, one of, the, uh, one of the limitations is inspections. Uh, the ordinance for inspections include, uh, right now includes uh, rooming houses, boarding houses, hotels, uh, bed and breakfast homes. Uh, we are permitted by ordinance, we are authorized by ordinance to do inspections on those properties. And so, for some reason, short-term rentals was left out. We think adding that back in will certainly help. Uh, and we certainly knock on doors as it relates to short-term rentals when there are complaints of problems but they really don't have to let us in, and, uh, and often they don't let us in, and so we're not able to, uh, to really enforce like we, like, we, uh, like we want to. So over the next couple of months, uh, prior to August, we'll, we'll be looking at other ways to strengthen the enforcement, and we will certainly bring that back to Council on August 13, as you've instructed us to do. And, and one more question, Mr. Smart. What about those that are unregistered, unlicensed, the ones that are underground that we all know are out there? What is your ability to uh, enforce any kind of um, code on them? It's a challenge to, uh, to find them. Uh, that, that's the challenge, to find them, to seek them out. And, and certainly, uh, as, as one gentleman spoke earlier, the uh, looking at advertising, checking advertising online and other forms of advertising is one way we can try and find those properties, identify those properties, and then check and see if, check our records to see if they're licensed and also work with the controller's office to see if they're paying their hot taxes. Um, but if they're not, for the, it, it, but if they're not, uh, we don't see their advertising or whatever, then they're, they are on the ground. And we may not know unless, of course, we get a complaint on the property and we go check it and find out that it's a short-term rental. So some, there are some still underneath the radar, and we're looking at ways to try, better ways to find those uh, properties that are operating that are unlicensed. And we're also recommending, as part of the reason we're recommending that maybe a penalty be added, too, that if you are operating without a license and you're caught, then you should pay a penalty versus just paying the regular register, the license fee that other, that other uh, uh, property owners pay. One, one last question. So if, if um, a neighbor calls, and I've heard this in, in reports, uh, either, let's say, an unlicensed, unregulated um, uh, short-term rental, uh, do they have to let you in, even if a neighbor complains about noise and traffic and people in and out and feeling unsafe? Once you knock on the door, how do you get your evidence that that is, in fact, a short-term rental? Yeah. Uh, it is a challenge. It is difficult times. They do not have to let us in. Uh, and that's, you know, like I said earlier, that's part of the reason we'll recommend that uh, we be authorized to do inspections of, uh, of short-term rental properties. And that authorization, I think, will help. It doesn't guarantee because we still have to abide by the, the constitutional right to <laughs> privacy. So they could still say, no, we're not going to let you in, but then that may give us better strength to get a warrant, you know, inspection warrant, if we have to, in order to get in the property and confirm how it's being used. Is it a regular single-family property or is it a short-term rental? You know, and, and so we really, sometimes we can't, we'll, we'll do what we can from outside, we'll do what we can from the right of way, but sometimes you just can't prove a case unless you can get in and confirm what's inside. Thank you. Mayor, yeah. I have a question. Ms. Pohl? Um, did we already vote this item? <coughs> we have not voted this item yet. Okay. I thought, I thought we had. Okay. No. We uh, approved the amendment. Okay. Uh, but we are back to the main motion now, which is basically to, to have the study, including the issue that was just raised by Ms. Houston. Uh, and then for recommendations to come back to us. Ms. Tovo. I just want to say that I'm, I'm glad that we're at least, um, well, I want to say I appreciate the resolution. I think it will result in some good discussion about what, um, what direction we might go in. I appreciate the fact that the Planning and Neighborhoods Committee, after a whole lot of discussion, agreed to, um, to ask the staff to bring forward a resolution to initiate the code amendments. I was ready to just move forward with the code amendments, but this is a good, reasonable compromise. Um, but I also just want to say I appreciate Council Member Zimmerman's comments. I think it is time for a review of the program. Um, when the Council agreed, when the Council created um, short-term rentals in residential areas, I believe they introduced a commercial use that is really challenging to live among 
for many of our residential neighborhoods. And, and I, I think it is time that we revisit that. I also think we need to look at what that loss of housing has, has done in, in different neighborhoods. In District 9, I believe we have the most short-term rentals. I think the number is somewhere around 415. And if you look at the council's other goals, the city of Austin's other goals of encouraging more families and children to live in the central city, of encouraging um, more rental opportunities, that is in conflict with taking housing off the market, off the long-term rental market, and um, creating, you know, what are what I mentioned earlier are in essence many hotels in our residential areas. So I'm very, um, I appreciate, again, I appreciate your comments. I appreciate the sponsors for bringing this forward. If we're gonna have this provision on the books, at least I wanna make sure that it um, mitigates some of the impact, but I'm also interested in looking at the, at the ordinance itself. Ms. Gallo. I just want to say thank you to the council members that have worked on this and to all the neighbors and STR owners that have come forward. Um, as we've heard the really horrific stories of the properties that are absolutely not being good neighbors, those are the properties that are not good neighbors because they're not in compliance. You know, we've not heard any stories um, about STRs that are actually in compliance with the occupancy standards which are not more than six people per, per unit. And also- Hold on, please. Go ahead. And also um, in some neighborhoods, it's limited to four. Um, we hear issues when the STRs are used in non-compliance to our current zoning code, which doesn't allow them to be used for pay to visit parties and wedding venues. And we just, I'm, I'm sorry, and I know how frustrated everyone has been, and I'm sorry that it's taken so long for us to come back. Of course, we're new at the job, but that it's taken so long for the inability to enforce the violators and the noncompliance people and the owners who choose not to have licenses. And I think this is a really good, good step in the right direction to figure out where the problem is from. And for those of you that feel like that this is not going to accomplish something, I know it will because my office and a lot of the other offices here that have constituents who are dealing with this are gonna be very aggressive in making sure that this moves forward and the compliance becomes more norm than um, not normal and that we have the month of July to be able to really sit down with all the stakeholders and the neighbors who have come forward and we've listened to and, and to really figure out where the issues are and what we need to do to, to resolve those from a compliance standpoint. So I just wanted to say thank you. I know you've spent a lot of time on this and I'm happy that, that uh, we were able to bring this resolution forward to, to start addressing this problem that's been occurring way too long. So thank you. Mr. Zimmerman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a, maybe a question for our legal uh, team here on this issue. I can think of a lot of uh, potential kind of weird scenarios. Uh, we have recreational marijuana that's uh, legal, right, in, in Colorado. And, you know, what if, what if somebody were to come into Austin uh, to take in one of our concerts? They bring some recreational marijuana with them. They leave a little bit of it in the short-term rental. And then uh, the code department comes in for an inspection. They find... They find some drugs, and would there be civil asset forfeiture potential there, or maybe code compliance finds it, the police find it, and they go, "Oh, we well, got a drug operation here." Is this a scenario that's completely unreasonable? Or oh, that's an interesting question, and I'll look into that. Okay. <laughs> yes. There's been a, a motion to end debate. Is there any further debate on this item? I, I have one brief comment for the. You know what? I'll save it for another time. <laughs> okay. I'll take that. If there's no further debate, we'll just go straight to a vote. Those in favor of item number 78 as amended, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Uh, 10 ones and women voting no. Thank you. We'll now move on from 78 to item 84, which is the... May so I? Yes. If I may. Um, I just wanted to advise, um, when we came back from dinner... And we took up item 83, which is the way of contract. Yes. Um, and then you asked to postpone it, and I made that motion. Well, um, no one told the folks who had gone out with our legal staff that that had happened. So they have, in fact, come up with 
um, what they hope is an acceptable compromise amendment that takes into the concerns, into consideration the concerns that you had voiced. And um, I have here from um, our legal staff the amendment, which I'll pass out. And what I wanted to ask was uh, we take item 83 up uh, to reconsider it. Um, not right this second. You can read the amended language. Um, but it uh, addresses the Pressler extension, and it separates it out into uh, new language um, subsections four and five to the be it resolved. And I will, um, so I think the staff had put extra effort into doing this and they were not aware that we had passed them by. And so I'm asking if we might um, not write this second because I want to give you some time to look at it, but before the evening is over, if we could revisit this. Um, and I'm hopeful that the language that has been crafted here meets uh, with your approval. I'll take a look at it. My only concern is that we've postponed this and some people left. The, the people the who had wanted to speak uh, did speak, um, but I think that the parties who are really um, watching this carefully are still here with us. I know there were some others that have left some of the time that we said that we were going to postpone it. So I'll take a look at this, but my concern would be that in saying we postpone while we have many of the people here who are still interested, we don't have all of them any longer. Um, uh, but I'd be happy to take a look look okay. at this and see if it's different. I will I will note, I'm not sure the people that you're talking about, the people that who had signed up to speak have, have spoken. No, no, I understand that. Okay. I understand that. 